Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Right, so welcome back to part 4. Yep, four of the uh, ultimate guide to Sekiro and Ashina part two. Yeah, uh, so this takes us all the way up to the first, like, main boss of the game, so to speak. So, again, we're going to be blasting through this because your time is precious and we don't want to waste it. So do exactly as we do. Um, run over here and kill these two guys. Uh, you can get the backstab on one of them. Um, and then... Don't wait around, come up around here and quickly kill this guy, uh, I kind of fucked up somehow, but um, kill him quickly, that way the ogre, uh, you've got like more space to fight him, like this guy isn't going to come down and start bothering you or giving you any hassle. Uh, just so you guys also <laughs> are aware, the fire, although it says that the ogre is scared of fire and blah blah blah, the actual fire that's going on on the left side of this like battle arena or whatever over there, doesn't do anything like it doesn't affect him in the slightest he'll just walk right through it and it doesn't bother him but if you use the fire shinobi tool it like stuns him for a good four seconds so that's essentially what we're going to do for some reason the ogre lost his aggro leash up where that guy we killed was and then didn't return back down so i'm just uh quitting and reloading that way the ogre will show up again so, that might happen to you. Uh, so all the guys are dead, but the ogre's still like chained up. So what we need to do is we need to actually break the ogre's aggro leash and reset him back to um, like neutral, I guess you could say. So he's going to break free, and we're just going to bait him down the stairs until his uh, aggro goes away. And now the easy way to just remember this is you can just run back up to where the, the idol is, and then uh, you just need to like hang off the furthest ledge, really, or just come close to it, and then that should break his aggro leash. Um, try to not let that happen. <clears throat> Climb up, don't drop off. <laughs> God, I just, I just fucking... No, no semblance just of control. Just leaping in any direction, hoping you'll land back in the sea. So the cool thing is, is that even when he's in this position, you don't need to take a gatch and sugar or anything like that. Make sure the flame vent is equipped. But you can just come straight up, as long as you're hugging that side crouched, and he won't see you, because he's a big fucking idiot. So backstab the ogre, that gets one health bar gone, and then you hit him with the flame vent, and then you hit him six times. Then you follow up with another flame vent, hit him another six times. So then what you want to do, if you follow up with the flame vent after that, essentially like he's got like a kind of window of like you can't really harm him, you can change to the, um, the firecracker, and you can like stagger him that way, but once the flame's uh, worn off, you hit him with the flame vent again, hit him six times, flame vent again, six times, and that's him dead. But without the flame vent, this guy is a fucking colossal pain in the ass. He's also the opposite of what Sekiro mm. actually is, in that most of his attacks you are probably dodging. Uh, yeah, because his attacks come in the form of grabs and you can't deflect them. Yep, they come as grabs and unblockables, and you can't do anything with that other than jump over it or dodge out of the way. So he's sort of counterintuitive to what the game is for almost every fight after this. And the hitboxes are fucking god awful, so even if you Ludicrous. are trying to dodge, then it's still, it's so horrible. Like, even when I came into this game uh, trying to see, like, is it possible to just do them normally, and I was fairly experienced at that point, 
he was still just annihilating me without the flame event. So even experienced players, it can be a pain in the ass for. But we're coming back to the temple and we are upgrading our gourd. Uh, our gourd. Our Estus flask, that's what you were about to say, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to call it that. Upgrading the Estus flask. Son of a bitch. It's not the same. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it is not. There's not a plus one next to it, is there? I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we just head back here and now we can just kind of press on. Now the next part, trust me, I have tried to, like you can stealth it quote unquote, but this is really the best we're gonna get. Um, you can take a gachin sugar, but ultimately it doesn't make a huge amount of difference because even with the gachin sugar equipped, you still get spotted. Um, and it's, it's really quite irritating actually. Oh wait, no you don't. Never mind. I'm talking garbage. So you take the Gatchin sugar and you go up that wall and you climb up. That's how you don't get spotted. I, I, was, I was doing something else um, and I did get spotted a lot, but essentially if you do it without the Gatchin sugar, you'll get spotted. You want to prioritize that enemy as well because he will like smash a pot and pan or something if yeah, I remember right. Everybody. And it alerts everyone to like start running over towards him. So I like, ignore what I said, take the Gatchin sugar, go along that shimmy wall, climb up, go into the grass when you're still Gatchin and crouch. And then that's how you don't get spotted. So then, I love um, shimmy walls. there's like a bunch of uh, a bunch of patrolling guards at this point. Now, again, this is like you could just go and kill them if you want, but this is a way of just doing it stealthily. And ultimately, it's a bit of a wait, but it's less of a pain in the ass than having to deal with all these guys. And then you like alert the boss and all that shit. So what you do is you throw a ceramic shard at this guy, and inexplicably he can't see you. And inexplicably, he can't see his pal die. So then, uh, you just wait for the next patrol to come around. I've sped up. And in the meantime, you backstab him. And then you go back to this position. So then what happens is, uh, another guy will patrol. You can see him coming along this way. He'll see his dead body and be like, Huh? Must be my imagination. And then you throw a <laughs> ceramic shard at him. And then you get to kill him. Then there's this last guy, he's obviously easy enough to kill because he's like just standing in this neutral neutral spot. Isn't there another one like after this? I think there's another guy just behind here as yeah. well. And then there's another guy after that as well. In the, in the tall grass. Nah, 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 he's, uh, he's like patrolling down there next to the boss. Uh, so we get him. Uh, you go up on top and drop down. Uh, well, no, uh, I think I just go and I just get him. Oh no, he's not. It's he's not. It's that's a different uh, part later on in the game. It's just that last guy standing there. So then, if you time that quickly enough, you can just quickly run up and backstab him. Sometimes that doesn't happen, however, and then you need to go and reset his aggro. I'm pretty sure I've got a footage in here. But this guy is um, for some reason, despite being like the same, like the the general, which is this kind of his stock kind of character. There's multiple of them in the game. Um, he's super easy. If you use um, like your fistful of ashes and the axe, as you can see here, this is just a super easy way of like getting them gone. Um, I mean, this works for a lot of enemies, but sometimes the general's specific weaknesses are a little bit different. This guy specifically, you can just kill him outright just doing that. You know what? Bet you he wishes he'd had, had like just a pair of goggles and he'd have been fine. <laughs> yeah. You know? Even glasses, fuck it. So this, you'll see an example where um, I was a little bit too slow. Um, and he turned. So if this situation happens, all you need to do is drag him back down this way, uh, which is like a kind of optional area, I guess you could say. You don't want to take this option at this point again. I think this option only leads to headless. Uh, it does, but we do come here to pick up the items and then we just boost back. Yeah. So if you, if you jump onto this branch, it cuts his aggro. So you just wait like a little bit. Uh, until it's like he's you know you think that he's got his back turned or whatever which he does now and then you just proceed to run up and backstab him that's how you kind of get out of that kind of spotty situation and then you just proceed to uh, wail on him as usual oh sneaky beaky like just any any time but you took your time like closing the gap are you just going to fist full of Ashram again? Um, I think I might take a slightly different approach this time. Hey, why bother? 
The Fistful of Ashes apparently works. Oh, you tried to throw in a firecracker. I did, but... Uh, and he uh, rocked your melon for that one. If I was using the axe, uh, which I think I might end up just defaulting on. Yeah. But I'm just kind of trying to show, like, where this particular general's... Um, like, he's a little bit more difficult than he's the last one. more difficult than, yeah, the one that you got before, um, and, like, the first part of Outskirts. But I would honestly uh, recommend just using the Fistful of Ashes and the Axe to just kill him. Yeah. Um, the Fistful of Ashes seems to be better than the Firecracker for this guy, because it's quicker. Absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of enemies in, uh, that you can just, like... So, as, uh, as an example, a lot of enemies get a tolerance to certain effects, but the uh, Fistful of Ash uh, doesn't seem to do that for a lot of enemies, so... That attack is just him committing suicide. Yeah, pretty much. <coughs> <coughs> if he's just gonna, like, sit there and spam, then yeah. So, there's a few items that we just need to pick up now, and then that, like, means we can then just progress on. So, there's some scrap iron there, which is, like, an upgrade material, uh, which we need to upgrade uh, certain items later on once we get the ability to do so. Um, although upgrading things, oh, it's kind of weird. Sometimes that's it's absolutely... That, that's when the sculptor finds he's got a hammer and a screwdriver. Hi. <laughs> the thing is, is, like, um, upgrading items is simultaneously, like, almost negligible, but then for some items it is, like, absolutely vital that you upgrade it. Yeah, I don't like how the upgrades... Is, if I remember right, the upgrade system's really weird in that you also have to upgrade certain tools to unlock the ability to upgrade other ones as well. Yeah. yeah. And you have to upgrade tools that are totally fucking useless, like the Raven's Feather, yep. just to upgrade a tool like the Shield, for example. And, yeah, I don't like that part of it, but it's whatever. The game tends to give you at least enough materials to make your way all the way through an entire upgrade path. Yeah, yeah it does, it does. Um, so... Although you didn't see him there, you want to just do exactly what we were doing here and just run through this particular area as fast as possible because the headless shows up, he's like kind of like a mini boss guy that we don't do until way later in the game because at this stage he will absolutely annihilate you. Uh, yeah, so just you don't have, you could fight him, you do have confetti, but he's going to one shot you if you miss time up. Yeah, there's if, a, there's if a you block instead of deflect, the chip damage is going to be really high because he has divine confetti. Yeah, he also does terror damage to you as well, yeah. and if that builds up, and that builds up through block, so. Now this bell here uh, will essentially like uh, activate the hard mode. I just want to come here and just kind of do all the little optional bits. Because you can unlock it and it's no effort and I just kind of want to show you. You don't need to do this. Now that bell will make enemies harder, but it gives them more, um, like, better drops. Ring the bell or no balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, again, we're going to avoid fact, the headless as well. Come here before you do Harata Estate and ring the bell and then do Lady Butterfly or no balls. Uh, I don't recommend doing that, but also no balls if you don't, so. Yeah, the gauntlet has been thrown. Anyway though, so again, um, we just want to avoid the headless because he will slow you down as well and make it harder to escape. So if you're a new player, this is good to just pick up like the last few items or whatever, but do not fight him. He will quite literally shove his hand up your ass. Yeah, actually. Just, just yeah. so you know. So uh, There's uh, also geckos here, you can take them out with one shear again, I think. Uh, another thing as well is we get two gachin sugars for this run, which is ultimate. like gachin sugars are one of the most useful items in the game. Uh, so ultimately it's pretty good picking them up. It's the most useful item in the game, as, as far as I'm concerned. It's the only useful item in the game, as far as I'm concerned, because I didn't use Fistful of Ashes or the Axe or anything <laughs> like that when I played it. I was just like, no, it's fine. I got a sword and a block button, I'll manage. And then, lo and behold, this game is almost a Demon Souls level of broken PvE. <laughs> yeah, yeah, legitimately. Like, the, the Axe is just um, Soul Ray, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you even need that fucking, like, the, the headband circlet that the royal class gets. You don't need that shit for mana regen. You're fine. Just wait. So this is us moving on to, like, the next section of the game, essentially. There's kind of like a... It's not like a boss, but there's like a kind of spectacle type a thing coming A sequence up. of events. Yeah, so we need to avoid Which this. Which could be unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true, because there's a big giant snake um, showing up. <clears throat> Yeah. I mean, to avoid it, uh, it's easy enough to avoid and there's almost, like, zero consequence to, like, fuck no, it up. No, if, if you fuck it up and it hits you, you'll die. That is the consequence. Yeah, but, but then... It's, it's 
Honestly, as the most brain dead I'm looking in your direction AI ever, apart from maybe like the last section where it's kind of hazy, but the rest of it is very much like this, where, well, obviously, if I cross now, it is going to fucking eat me. Yeah, so when it's uh, looking away, that gives you the chance to just jump over. Might as well, you might as well just take your time, unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Again, this is obviously focused towards newer players. Oh my god, we need to... Sorry, every single episode, my screens keep going black, whilst it still keeps recording, uh, because, like, the screens are, like, timing out. Anyway, it's fine. Luck luckily we, we didn't can't move. see the snake. He can't see us. <laughs> <laughs> so the snake. So when its snake raises its head, you jump over again. Um, I fucked this up and I had to go back. Just like a. Don't turn around here, by the way. If you go back to the start of the cave, the snake can hit you, because <laughs> it like gnarls and like smashes sure. into the front of the cave. So if you run back, yeah, it can fuck your shit up. Same the, at the end of this. The biggest consequence is actually the the time that you put in to trying to get past it. So ultimately, you're better off just doing it in one go than fucking up and then having to well, do yeah. it. Well, yeah, if you look at it as a time is money thing, dying to this snake essentially costs you like five bucks. Aye, which something like just that. isn't worth it because it's just a fucking stupid. Snake. And there probably is like a real world amount of money that dying to this snake actually costs you, but you just need to divide the value of a life by how long someone usually lives and figure out how much of that time was spent. <laughs> 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 redoing this part of the game. So once the snake shoves its head directly like that, uh, you just drop down, you jump up onto the ledge. Uh, so you kind of just, the snake eventually like slithers around you at this point. Um, you just yeah. kind of... If you cross quick enough, it won't spot you while it's looked like that and then you want to run under it. And... A lot of the time it looks like it can see you and it still can't under yeah. the position it's in, but it's hard to really know, so you, there's no point. It's also around. tough to, like, you're meant to be able to hide behind these... Um, these like frozen I streams see, yeah. of water but it doesn't ever look at them it, it, it basically doesn't work <laughs> so there is a little bit of nuance coming up uh, the smallest possible amount of nuance um, so we need to run up and grab that item over there which is fair enough we can we can do that but there's you need to repel up uh, to, to escape this thing and you can miss time the repel and it can fuck you and kill you and if that happens like, that's like right at the last second when it fucks up, so... I just love seeing the snake go ape shit after you stab it in the eye. It's okay, so, so just be careful. Right, repel up, just be careful, and then you, you want to be looking up specifically. Um, because if I tried to repel up onto that one and missed the one before it, and then that's what fucked me up, so... Just make sure you, you, you hit that first repel point that you have to look up to get to. And then you just keep going forward and then that's you. It's pretty much yeah. self-explanatory. That's you at the eye, though. So we can pick up another Gatchin Sugar, which is good, but I mean, again, there's a, they're like super valuable. Um, there's a bunch of times in the guide where using the Gatchin Sugar just causes... It just eliminates so much hassle. Um, we should probably touch on, like, just going back to Headless while we're speaking about Sugars as well. Defeating each Headless gives you an infinite use version of the Sugar item associated with that Headless. Yeah. Just so, just so you guys know what the reward is, we'd still suggest doing headless like probably last. I guess you might as well leave it until until you feel like you can take it on, which is maybe after like. Oh, so actually, I have to explain a thing here. So that one patrolling guard used the ceramic shard on him, right? And then it kills him. Uh, but then you come up here and then you use three shurikens to kill that guard. And then use the other three shurikens to kill that guard before the tarot troop comes around the corner. Um, essentially, this guy walks so slowly, and it's such a pain in the ass to like fight these guys head to head. So you do want to just backstab this guy. But if you do, if you use the shurikens to kill those three guys quick enough, it means that you can just backstab this guy here rather than down here, which causes even more time to wait. It's just a little bit quicker way of going about it. So try and copy exactly what you saw there. Uh, what we've done. Sorry, to interrupt you, but it's just kind of. No, that's Basically. fine. I was just going to say maybe leave headless until like a so, few areas after uh, the We do the headlesses uh, until like, like the start of the last third of the game. Um, maybe last quarter. Uh, we do leave it to, for quite a while, but ultimately they're, they, they're not really particularly relevant. So backstab one of those guys, ideally the spear guy. Spear guy is always a little bit harder. And then kill all of them. And then there's just a few items around here. Uh, definitely want to make sure we don't miss any of the coin purses. They're like super relevant. And, uh, yeah, that's us kind of moving on from this area. Also, if you're dying a lot, make sure you buy coin purses. Oh, yeah, okay, that's actually something to mention. 
Uh, if there's any vendors that are selling coin purses, if you have any spare gold, buy the coin purses because it essentially banks your gold. So if you die, you're not losing half. You're not really technically losing any. I think any. they cost a little bit more than what they're worth. Yeah. But it's better than you losing all of it each time you die. Now, the thing is... Is, you lose, is it half each time you die? Or is it all? It half, so, yeah. Half, yeah. But if you're running around with like 2,000 cent, then you might as well just buy a couple of big bags of gold instead of losing a thousand cent for dying. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, we just kill these three guys. So now we're coming up to the boss. Now, the boss is uh, Giobu, I think. Giobu, Masetaka, Oniwa, and you will not pass. <laughs> <laughs> but turns out we will pass because he's extremely fucking easy. Um, way easier than a, a lot of the... He's easier than the Chained Ogre without the Flame Vent. Well, now that you have Firecracker, <laughs> he's like yeah. a piece of cake. But there's another element to this boss which is quite interesting. You can block all of his attacks. Yeah. And you don't take chip damage through them. But so don't even you don't even need to bother trying to deflect him. Just block him. That's what it is. My name is Gyobu Masataka Oniwa, and as I breathe, you will not pass the castle gates. So You'll get a little prompt there to use the um, the the hook attack. So you, you'll always be able to use the hook, but if you have the hook attack unlocked when you're in air, you can do like an attack at coming out of it, um, and then it's just a way of getting a little bit extra damage into him. Um, I think you can also like stun the horse a little bit sometimes. But all you need to do is you block his attack, and when he does his last final attack in his attack string, then you just hit him a bunch of times. Uh, you'll see it here, he kind of like leans, does like a big one, like this one. This then gives you the chance to get a few free hits in. Don't get too greedy, that's how you fuck these things up. Just get, uh, I think it's like two or three hits in, and uh, and again, just continue to block all his attacks. And that's you. you don't even need to use the firecracker, really. No, you, I, if I remember right with Genichiro, if you block like three or four of his attacks in a row, but like perfect deflects in a row, the horse will just like walk away from you slightly and then you've got a perfect window for a bunch of attacks. It's like his attack string slows down each time you deflect until he eventually just stops that combo and starts again. Ah, so when you use the uh, the hook attack on him, it like, it kind of gives you a little bit of a chance to get a few free hits in as well. Oh, it's all chip damage, which again, you want to chip away at their health and then build posture damage because they retain that posture damage more the lower their health is. So I kind of like I've been I kind of like fucked up a few blocks for some reason I, I don't know how but um, I took a bit of damage but ultimately like this is this is sloppy and this is like your posture is about to break. Um, and so he's still to lower your posture you hold in L one. Yeah, you just hold block. But the, the thing is it, it, sh it should be easy enough. Um, like you should probably have noticed that by now honestly but. Again, this, you know, these guides don't really cover, like, the, the core mechanics because it assumes that you can at least fucking play the game to some level. Yeah. Anyway, though, um, again, you even when he's in his second phase, you can just block every one of his attacks. You don't need to deflect. Um, but you can. It's, it's a good way to, like, keep practicing the game because the fights that come up after... Like, the next boss fight after this is Genichiro, is it not? So, uh, no, it is absolutely not. Oh, you don't... Wow. The Genichiro is not for a long fucking time, I'll tell you that. Wow. Are you, like, a female general? <laughs> Why are you not taking on Genichiro right after Giobu? What's wrong with you? I mean, you can't- there's bosses in between that anyway. One boss in between that. <laughs> no, two, sorry. Two bosses in between that. At, at What's minimum, wrong with you? But at, at least in this case, there's about 15 bosses between it. Christ! Yeah. What, what attack power are you going to have at Genichiro? Like, eight? Uh, <laughs> no, you don't get any. You get, like, one extra attack power. You just have, like, eight healing gourds. And that counteracts a lot of his uh, difficulty. But anyway... That counters all of his difficulty is what you meant to say. So there you go. I mean, that is how you defeat that guy. Like, we could just able, e would easily go on a tangent during the fight there because ultimately, as you've seen, you just hold in block, wait until his attack string ends and hit him. And that is it. Like, there is nothing else you need to do for him because he doesn't yeah. chip damage you through his attacks. So you don't need to, like, time deflects. You don't need to, like, watch out for certain attacks and avoid certain things. You can just tank all of his attacks through block. So, you should imagine if you could Makiri counter his horse charge and you like stomp the horse's face <laughs> out of the ground. 
So, this is an important part here. We got that gold sack during the Herat estate, so that is where we're going to buy a gold seed. Sold them a thousand gold. Yep, and if you've been racking up Sen because you've been collecting money while you've been playing on, like, this guide, then, um, yeah, make sure you buy any whatever spare coin purses that guy yeah, has for yeah. sale as well, just to bank that, because the next boss that comes up after this is... There's some RNG involved, and in it. it can go a bit haywire pretty quick. So you speak to this guy, and he gives you, like... I guess this might be one of the few actually relevant quests. And even this at that, you just do it immediately. Line. This is a quest line. It unlocks uh, fucking Shinobi arts, does it not? Uh, it's, you get yeah, it's, like, it unlocks uh, one of them, yeah. You get like a fighting skills page to work through. So you want to do this just now because you can do it in like five minutes and this unlocks like a whole bunch of different attacks. Now the I'm pretty sure- just hates midgets. I'm pretty sure the, um, he absolutely does. He hates midget rice farmers <laughs> the most. He's like, you see a midget and he's got a rice hat, that's two points. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the thing is though, is although we're unlocking the, that attack... Um, Sorry, I shouldn't use the word midget. Vertically challenged people. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't even use any of the attacks from that in this game. We don't, we don't even use Ichimonji. Uh, we don't use any of them. You should though, Ichimonji's so good. So you sh you sh if you're good at the game, yeah, Ichimonji is good, but you, you know do, what's better than Ichimonji? You jump over the unblockable sweep and get the stomp on someone's head and do the double Ichimonji and it's like half a bar of posture instantly. Uh, so don't listen to anything he says because you can just go R2, R1, R2, R1. You can, <laughs> but come on. So <laughs> it's fun to be had. <laughs> so as you saw, as you saw there, uh, we went up to the top of the rafters, we've got another prayer bead. So that's a whole, there's a whole lot of good stuff in that uh, that area, and now we are just moving on to the next area uh, to quickly get that guy's uh, quest done, and then we can move on with like the rest of the game, I guess. But the quest is like super easy. It's like kill three menial enemies, and then that's it. Yeah, kill three midget rice farmers, and then he gives you a page of skills, which are all so good. All of them are great. That entire skill page is so useful. Now remember you to enhance your attack power here. Um, you can sometimes you can go like a little bit of time and you forget to do it because it's like you have to manually upgrade your attack for some reason. Nah, do attack power one run or no balls. Well, I mean, I guess <laughs> that's the reason for it. It's for challenge runs, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You see, the bad thing about it though is that is it is it attack power or vitality that's tied to your posture? Uh, one of them is tied to your posture. I think it's vitality. I think you may be wrong about that, because I think attack power dictates combat stats, and I think posture falls under that. Well, not whatever. But so anyway, you run up and kill this guy quickly, and uh, then you just like climb up the wall, and you climb over this wall to the right here, and uh, so now start crouching, and make sure you don't get caught by these guys. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Again, you know, you can fight your way through three guys, but it's just, they're just a pain in the ass if you don't. Uh, you need to use the axe to split the hats. And so quickly kill that. this one guy, because uh, sometimes if you get close, the other guy will notice you as you go to backstab him, and then the other, and then the guy that you try to backstab will turn around. And you can't do it. So just run up and quickly backstab him, and then use the axe to kill that last guy. And then pick up the pellet. Why don't we get a hat shield? We do get a hat shield. What the fuck are you talking about? We do get a hat shield. No, but one that actually, like a hat that we can just wear as a shield, like those rice farmers. To be fair, that would. I... Those criticisms will be coming in another video. <laughs> but uh, regardless, then we just run back to this guy, and that's pretty much this it. We just oh, I forgot. I never mind. I just uh, totally blanked on the fact that this game doesn't have any attire no. to change to at all. Never mind. You're right. <laughs> oh, we do get the update soon. The boss rush. You see, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure we have. We should have it now. You Hopefully. see, update. What you mean is someone made secure better and efficient. No, no, it's an official. It's an official. Oh, did they just accept that models know what they're doing and they make better games now? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. So now we are... I'm still not going to play it because it doesn't have multiplayer and I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> does it have multiplayer? Modern. No, it does That You can barely even call that multiplayer. Point is, again, so as we're going on a tangent, just copy what we were doing. We're while back, we speak to Emma, we upgrade our gourd. We, we, need, this, we need this guy's screwdriver. Fit the mist feather, despite the fact it doesn't really matter. You might as well not even bother. But I guess you need to get the Mist Raven in order to upgrade the other items. So you actually have to get it, which is irritating. Um, and then we... I can't remember Pop what we do some here. coin purses. Oh, so we upgrade a couple of things. Uh, so we 
Use 200 gold to upgrade the uh, spring loaded the spring loaded firecracker. That makes it just a little bit better for defeating the ox that's coming up, uh, the big bull enemy, whatever you want to call it. But that's really all we're doing the just now. The blazing bull. Yeah. Now you should probably have a lot more gold than us, so the amount of gold that we're using here is never going to be an issue. Um, and then we just head back to uh, Ashina. So now we can continue on. So like the last time, we just run up, just hit this guy, just do the do the, the kill. <laughs> the screen goes black again. There we go. So we head up, we head up the wall again, and uh, what you do is use the shuriken here to kill the dogs, and then this will like alert the guy, but it'll be like, "What was that noise?" And then you just uh, you just drop attack and kill him. It was his imagination that killed the dogs. That's how a Metal Gear NPC would justify it. So then we can just uh, come up here and backstab this guy. Now, a lot of the time this guy goes up to the top of the stairs and for some reason he didn't. Um, so, uh, for instance, these two guys will start they speaking to each can. other. Uh, but for some reason, um, like, I, it shouldn't be an issue, but just for some reason he was standing at the bottom of the stairs instead of the top. But that's what it is. Anyway, so we repel up here and there's a little hidden item behind this wall down here. Uh, it's an aqua sugar, so that's like the thing that increases your attack power. And uh, I would just, just jump up this wall. Do you use that at any point during the game? Yeah. Oh, well, we actually use that. For cheese and bosses. I figured. I do, I'm just surprised you even bothered to use it, because it's not like they can get around the cheese anyway. I know. So we, we repel up to that wall, and then we wait a little bit for that guard to pass, and then it allows us to backstab him. Um, and then we head up to this tower up here, which has a coin purse? Do you do nice. the do you do the skip? Uh, no, don't do the skip. Anyway, we come back here, and I think there's a little bit of upgrade material and another Gatchin sugar. And lizards. Yeah, but we just ignore the lizards. Yeah, who cares? Just run away from them. They're not worth anything. You get like no experience like from point them. Point one experience or some shit. Yeah. So. We come down here and then we like drop down into this grass here. Uh, this way nobody hears us drop down or anything like that. We backstab this guy, which shouldn't alert the other guys, which allows us to backstab one of these taros, and then we just ignore the rest of the enemies because they are pretty much avoidable and basically we want as much health as we can for the boss, so let's not let these enemies soak up our health bar or our healing items. Especially when it's basically impossible to like stealthily kill those two taros. Theoretically, you could take a Gatchin Sugar and kill all of them, but it's just not worth it. Uh, you can drop down from that tower. Like, when you killed that first guy, you can drop down from that tower and get behind the Gatchin that uh, spotted you here. They're behind the uh, whatever they're called. No, there's two of them, so if you kill one of them. No, I know, but I'm saying, like, you killed the one that was in front and the one that was behind that spotted you, but you can go up in that tower and drop down behind the one that spotted you, I think. So, make a point to Maybe. kill the enemy before you... Like, if you go too far into this boss arena, the bull appears, make sure you kill any enemies that are coming at you before the boss shows up, because you do not want to get ganged up on. The, bo the bull normally kills um, the enemies that are standing near it, so that's something to just bear in mind. Now... The technique for killing this bull is quite simple. Um, it, initially, it might seem very daunting, but essentially, it does an attack, and you'll see it, right? It lowers its head. It should do it now. When it lowers its head, you want to deflect that attack. Now, again, you just do have to get good enough to do that, but you deflect its attack, you hit its head a couple of times, you use the firecracker, it goes back, you hit that a couple of times from that, and that's essentially the loop that we're taking here for this boss, and it's uh, very effective. Now, you want to make sure he's definitely doing the particular... He will shake his head before he does it, the, the charge that you're looking for. And if you deflect it properly, it'll kind of, like, rotate around and stop and allow you to hit it. So, just, that's kind of the, the opening. Um, again, this is a boss that you do not want to get greedy. And you don't want to get backed into a corner either. No. Because the camera angle will ruin it instantly. But, yeah. Block the boss, uh, deflect the attack, and then hit it with a firecracker and you get some free damage. So again, there is only one attack we're looking for, and it's that one just there. The head comes down, and then it'll do that kind of skidding round thing. Um, 
You can also use it, as you saw there, as an opening to heal, because uh, it will skid around and stop, as opposed to skid around and come straight for you. As you can see there, once its health goes down low enough, you hit it a bunch of times and it will look stagger. Um, again, I'm getting super greedy. Don't go for those last hits, just hit it twice and be careful. If it does chase you into a corner, you can gain some extra height by using the wall jump to jump over it. So jump onto the wall and then jump backwards over the build as well. You can avoid the hitboxes pretty neat that way. This is true. And of course, the firecracker itself is just very good for being able to maintain this. If it's charged at a firecracker, run away heal. And then once you do enough damage to it, not full damage, but enough, um, it'll just like fall over and just let you kill it. It's because you max out its posture. Yeah, uh, so the cool thing is, is that it gives us an upgrade, uh, like an immediate upgrade that you just get that increases the damage of, uh, not the damage, increases the healing capability of your Gord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade uh, our Gord again, so that means that we just kind of get like a, an immediate big spike in like healing potential. And uh, let's just get rid of that fucking guy. Mercury counter is just too good. So there's this uh, like old hag or whatever. Um, Essentially, you use like a Mebo balloon in front of her, and she'll be like, "Ah, yes, very good." It's oh. because it's because the Mebo balloon animation is meant to be like a prayer. Yeah. So and... I accidentally used one before, like speak to her and then do it. And she's all like, "Oh, you pray too. I love a good Christian boy." Yeah. And then she like catfishes you. Now I'm using the balloon of wealth because I'm never going to be Rich. using it. Um, and now another thing to bear in mind is that she shows up an amount of times throughout the game. Uh, you can do this three times to her just now, and you get like the you get the items that she gives you, and then she ends with divine confetti. Uh, that's it. Like that's all her usefulness for like the entire game. So she'll show up all the times and just give you like a little bit of dialogue, but that's like it. Uh, but now uh, we're gonna enhance our skills. Uh, well, we finally got the, our last prayer bead, so that's that's really good for this part of the game. We're as upgraded as we can be. And then we will acquire... Skill rich. Six skill points to spend, so get a medicine potency, apparently. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, I don't immediately use all of our skill points every single episode just to kind of give you guys a bit of a buffer. Um, do, See, do you know what I mean? This is, this is where you went wrong. You should have immediately invested in Ichimonji. No, don't get Ichimonji. Just use exactly the skills that we buy. Well, don't get Ichimonji. Get the one that increases your uh, posture damage dealt with deflects and stuff like that. Those are really fucking good. Oh, actually, that's a fair point. We actually do need to get Ichimonji at some point because there's a few um, skills in that tree. Actually, now that I remember, there is a few skills in that tree that we need. Yeah. Um, you just never use Ichimonji because you're too busy trying to play the game incorrectly. Yeah, correct. You're too busy trying to fit the square peg in the round hole. Quite literally. While holding the round peg in the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're beating the square peg into the round hole with the round peg. <laughs> <laughs> now, to make a point though, um, the skills that we are buying are definitely like that is a like a, a suggested upgrade route. You don't have to take it that way, obviously. And also, we're not using all our skill points every single episode. That way, you know, if you're a little bit behind, we're not just massively ahead of you as well. Some do cost like three to six skill points at a time yeah. to invest in, so you may want to stock up. Like, don't spend them all, basically. Just get things that you think will help you at that point in the game. Theoretically as well, um, the reason, another reason why we didn't, uh, we only bought Emma's Medicine there is the next skill point that we want to get is probably going to be like a three or four coster as well, so we're not just going to, you know, just get a, a, a useless, uh, like, two skill upgrade. It, like could two also, upgrade. it could also end up costing you three points just to have the ability to select the skill that you want because the true, skill true. chain that, pre, like, that goes before it, so... And again, if you can't get a skill uh, that we have, ideally just farm like a little bit until you're at the same level as us. It's not going to be a big deal, but if you're on the same level as we are for this guide, then that's like the, the recommended uh, point to be at. But ultimately, that brings us to the end of uh, part five. So hopefully you enjoyed that, uh, part four rather, but hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, we will see you in the next guide. Catch you later. See you.